rock apes, also known as Batetet, which when I tried to figure out how to pronounce it, the only thing I could find was Batutut, to which I'm still not sure is accurate. It's also called Noizung, Ujit, and Wild Men. In this mysterious creature, all they has a large presence in military conspiracies, of all things, as well as folklore and cryptozoology. Mostly known to inhabit Vietnam, Malaysia, and Cambodia, the rock ape seems to be comparable to Bigfoot in many ways. However, they are much smaller, being around 5 feet tall. I couldn't find any source in Vietnamese mythology that talks about this cryptid or anything really analogous to them, but if I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments. So this elusive cryptid, at least to my knowledge, seems to be more of a recent addition to the folklore of Vietnam, like, I don't know, maybe the last couple hundred years or so. British zoologist John McKinnon, who you might remember being pretty famous in the 90s for his discovery of tons of new types of animals, made an interesting discovery concerning these guys back in the 1970s while exploring the wilds of Vietnam. It was obviously something he couldn't wholly engage with because his career would be destroyed. But the man discovered human-like, but very non-human-like footprints at the same time. The discovery caused him to want to quit his expedition immediately and head home. In his book, The Search for the Red Ape, McKinnon states he knew that whatever made those footprints was nothing that they had any information about, and even after discovering more, he was just quite happy to abandon it. He'd later admit never returning to the area that he found the footprints, because obviously these you know, these people aren't really allowed to go outside of the reality tunnel. That is, unless they want to destroy their reputation, career, and lives. In 1982, Professor Tran Hong Viet discovered the same footprints logged by John McKinnon and made a cast of them which indeed proved to be completely inhuman and like no ape known to the scientific world. And like most scientists who discover something that goes against the narrative, he abandoned his research as well. That is until 1996, when he published his research, as well as an image of the footprint. Viet discovered that the Noizung, aka Forest People, have the most sightings in specifically the Vu Quang Nature Reserve and the minority of people who live in the area are positive that the Forest People exist. However, the Noizung is just one of many ancestral categories of entities residing in the area. There are also four spirits, genies, and other hairy bipeds in their lore. The locals state that there are even bigger ones, and then there are the more human-like ones around five feet tall. Anthropologist Professor Dong Ningviema Van, director of Hanoi's Institute for Religious Studies, has collected many tales about the creatures from the locals, like lots of myths concerning small but superhumanly strong ape-like humans that can use fire and they eat forest mollusks. They are nocturnal and only move around at night. If they come upon humans at a fire, they are usually actually drawn to humans that have fires in the night. They'll basically just come up and casually sit beside any humans there and sometimes speak unintelligible words, but mostly remain silent. And as long as they are not attacked and are respected, they leave humans unharmed in this way. However, despite all the research, these creatures remain mostly ineffable to Dr. Van. And while these humanoids do have many names in East Asia, the rock ape is what it's mostly known as in English-speaking countries. And this is because of the plethora of encounters that they had with, you mean allegedly, had with U.S. forces during the Vietnam War. Craig P.J. Jorgensen, a veteran of the conflict, chronicled encounters with these rock apes in his book, Strange But True Stories of the Vietnam War. In 1971, two rock apes were even allegedly captured by a Vietnamese general who requested a search expedition to discover the rest of the elusive beings, but they didn't find anything. They did bring back some elephants, though, for the circus. But the odd thing is both sides during the war have many accounts of encountering these creatures. One particular story, or account, I should say, by Mr. Jorgensen is uh, how the rock apes are just completely fearless, even to GIs. In the account, one of the rock apes jumps out of a tree after shaking it violently, only then to stand tall, scrutinizing all the war-weary soldiers. 
very boldly and fearlessly to exactly quote the story. Jorgensen describes it as being very muscular, with reddish fur all about its body, but while still being humanoid, more ape than man. Some soldiers claimed it was an orangutan, but others quickly refuted the idea because the orangutan is not native to Vietnam. In any case, the rocket vanished shortly afterward just as quickly as it had appeared, leaving the men vexed to the extreme, wondering if what they just saw was real, or some kind of wartime PTSD-induced hallucination. From veteran Robert Baird's diary, another interesting account happened in 1968. While camped out and surrounded by the darkness of the endless jungle, bizarre noises permeated beyond the perimeter. Being the dead of night, this was obviously pretty creepy, but the unknowable nature of what lay beyond the black made it even worse. They couldn't light a fire after all because it might have drawn the Viet Cong to them, but they couldn't sit around just guessing about what these bizarre noises might be. Somebody had to do something. A brave corporal, nicknamed Pancho, went up to the communications bunker to see if he could make anything of it. He couldn't, and on his way back to the camp, the soldier let loose his lead spitter into the jungle. The discharged firearm alerted the rest of the soldiers who immediately prepared themselves for the worst. However, the corporal made it back to camp before anyone could get too worried. And when questioned about why he used his weapon, the man said that there was a bush that wasn't there before on his way back to the camp, and that when he leaned down to investigate it, the bush snorted at him, which caused him to panic. Another account takes place in 1969, when a group of soldiers was ambushed by enemy fire. The squad hit the jungle floor for cover, and did their best to return the tender affections of the enemy. But to their surprise, out of nowhere, a rock ape ran through their lines. Allegedly, it was seven feet tall and muscular to the extreme, like a body of a superhero out of a comic book. The rock ape took some stray bullets, but didn't die. It merely stumbled momentarily before leaping off into the foliage out of sight. The Viet Cong began screaming at one another in panic and fled the area with one enemy soldier even leaving behind his firearm. It is assumed that they retreated because of the rock ape and the folklore surrounding it that was well known in their culture. However, that odd experience was not the end for the soldiers concerning rock apes. That night when they made camp, Howling, otherworldly noises assailed them constantly. Inhuman whines, barks, growls, and frothing echoed in a cacophony from the darkness. The next day, the GIs found a Viet Cong soldier torn to shreds in a spectacularly grotesque display. The US soldiers were so horrified by this experience, they immediately retreated back to their bunker. One of the witnesses to this bizarre encounter later said, the rest of the time we were in Vietnam, I never heard the sounds or saw anything like it again. The talk of what we had seen spread very quickly, and some of the locals called it a name that I can neither pronounce or remember, but the translation, if I recall, was stench monkey or foul monkey, something like that. I can't remember for sure. What I do know is that it bothered me so much that I transferred from there to a job on a helicopter so that I wouldn't have to be in the jungle anymore. Michael Kelly of the 101st Airborne Division gave an equally harrowing account, but this time it's many if not hundreds of rock apes. When Kelly and his fellow troops were eating lunch in the jungle, a bunch of the creatures came out casually walking through the trail towards them. The platoon, almost in a single motion, began to unleash all the firepower they had at the strangers. Everything. Grenade launchers, you name it. Imagine that scene in The Predator, where they all spray lead for like five minutes straight into the jungle. But instead of a single squad, it was a whole platoon. Kelly and the platoon sergeant, along with a few other men, had remained hidden and moved stealthily to the flank of the enemy. But what they saw kind of broke their minds. It seemed like countless phantoms moved all around them at astonishing speed, vanishing and reappearing only momentarily in the thick jungle foliage. Kelly said the creatures made otherworldly noises while snarling with their teeth as they moved and barked in a way that reminded him of dogs. However, they did not engage the soldiers, 
and instead just vanished from sight altogether because of their swift movement. When the dust settled, not a single drop of blood was found or any corpse left behind by the rock apes. The US soldiers were dumbstruck and looking around as if they might all have gone insane. Kelly would later say when talking about the encounter, quote, This may sound very strange to you, but although I had no or little concern about killing the enemy, the killing of innocent animals turned my stomach and could enrage me if done without being a necessity. But I searched the site, but found not a drop of blood, which totally amazed me. Given the amount of firing that had gone on, I wonder to this day if the men were shooting just to scare the rock apes away, or whether they were really just poor marksmen. The men who'd suffered the surprise looked a bit worse for wear, and I'm sure if you had to wash their shorts out as a result of the unwelcome visit, it really scared the crap out of them. I kid you not. End quote. But these are just a handful of accounts during the Vietnam War by US soldiers, and trust me, there are plenty more to sink your teeth into if you're into it. 